So as we all know, there has been a kind of an important sort of event that had happened within the last couple of days, and it was the possible detection of biosignatures inside of Venus's atmosphere. The interesting thing about life being on v or in Venus's atmosphere is that it is something we believe to be entirely possible. The planet at one point in time may have actually had water on it. In fact, we're fairly certain it did have water on it. Think of it like a giant planet, except it's all Florida, right? Everybody there would be insane, I'm sure. But for a while, uh, Venus's atmosphere was downright balmy. It may have had a similar sort of atmosphere to Earth. There was water on the ground. And as we know, with Earth, most of Earth was covered in water at one point in time. In fact, there was a point when we were just a water ball, but Venus may have actually gone through a similar sort of deal and it actually had enough volcanism as well to create land. The problem is, is that, you know, nowadays we know the volcanism may have gone a little out of control, but it is entirely possible that when this water was actually everywhere, life could arise. Now, where, do, where does life come from? We're not really sure. It could just evolve from atomic soup, I guess you could call it, that eventually becomes amino acids, that becomes proteins, that can ultimately become life. But we don't really know where the line of separation is, how it goes from, say, something inorganic to organic. But we do know that like I said, there was water on the planet. So you have all of what you need, what we think to start life right then. Anyways, as volcanism began to happen more and more often and more CO2 and sulfuric acid, or at least sulfur in general got released into the atmosphere, the CO2 specifically caused a massive greenhouse to start forming. So greenhouses can be good, but greenhouses can be bad, especially when it's a runaway greenhouse, which is exactly what makes Venus actually the hottest planet in our solar system, actually hotter than Mercury. The interesting thing that we need to kind of see with Venus as well is if you take life, like our definition of life, right? We can exist between kind of actually on a cosmic scale, a very small temperature gradient, at least as humans, right? I mean, it can get way colder and it can definitely get way hotter, but what's interesting is down in the oceans, the deepest part of the oceans, in fact, on Earth, we find extremophiles existing in temperatures that should actually sterilize the surrounding environment, but they're there. So here's what may have happened, right? So as Venus warmed up and the oceans would boil away, which in turn would also create even more greenhouse gases as H2O rises and then traps more heat, the atmosphere would start to thicken, which we know the atmosphere is, it's incredibly thick on Venus with like 12 Cs at this point. And as this atmosphere thickened, it's sort of like a similar aspect to uh, how Mars, right? If you were to take a helicopter on Mars, the thing wouldn't be able to lift off the ground because the air is so thin there. But if you took Venus with such a thick atmosphere, it's gonna make flight a lot easier. So you have these microbes that may not have even been, and. Bear with me, this is hypothetical. It's just something cool to think about and talk about. You have microbes that could potentially be lifted up into the atmosphere just by normal winds. And this is not too far-fetched because we actually know on Earth right now, in the stratosphere, we have microbes, like everywhere. They're also somewhat extremophiles, but that's the limit of life on Earth. And one of the things that's also most interesting about Venus is we've known for a very long time Let's say you were to take a hot air balloon on Venus, right? And you go up as high as you can possibly go. It turns out you and I, we would need air to breathe, obviously, but you could walk outside of your cocooned hot air balloon or, you know, definitely a reinforced hot air balloon. And you could live out there because the temperature is pretty balmy. So it's not too far-fetched to believe that microbes could also be living up there and they wouldn't be like earth microbes because the sulfuric acid that's actually in the atmosphere would destroy life as we know it. So it wouldn't be us contaminating the planet either from previous probes that have landed. Everything would have been sterilized, even extremophiles from earth. In fact, it's kind of funny to think extremophiles from earth might just be a bunch of punks to extremophiles on Venus. But the reason we think that there's potentially life up there is phosphine was detected within the atmosphere. Now, it is possible through chemical reactions, very rare chemical reactions, to actually form phosphine by other means. It's, like I said, it's extremely rare. So 
it's usually considered a biosignature of life and only life. So this biosignature gives us a pretty good idea that there may be life on that planet, but it is important to kind of approach this with a bit of skepticism. Uh, what was it? Bill Clinton back in the 90s, I believe, uh, we, he, he came out from what scientists had told him and confirmed that they found life on Mars. There was no life on Mars. It, it, so far, all we found is sterility on Mars. It just, there's not enough atmosphere and the sun just blasts it with radiation every day because the magnetosphere on it is not even functional. So it's pretty much a sterile planet. But Venus, thick atmosphere, roughly Earth size. They call it our twin sister, although it's not exactly a twin. It's an interesting prospect that life perhaps a second genesis could actually be forming within our backyard or had us already formed and we're just finally able to see it and discover it for the first time. That would make me think that what we need to do next is obviously start looking elsewhere for life because if something as simple as the volatile planet next door can literally produce life, then what's to stop Io from producing life or any of the other ice moons around Jupiter and Saturn, we know that there's water there. I mean, maybe water, even if it's just briefly on the planet, is kind of a key thing for life, which it is. It is a key thing for life. But like I said, take it with a grain of salt. We should definitely approach this and fund this endeavor more so to try to figure out if there actually is life out there. Because like I said, if we can find this just in our own solar system, that means life isn't special. And if life isn't special, there's definitely aliens out there who aren't talking to us. Although I don't know if I personally would wanna to talk to a hyper intelligent bunch of apes uh, with nuclear arsenals. So uh, this, would be, this would be great if we could figure out if there's life out there. Anyways, I wanna hear what you guys think down in the comments. I know this one was a little more sporadic. I'm trying to go a different way with my videos and kind of talk about science and just kind of do this sort of like face to camera, which is also face because you're watching. Hopefully you're watching. I don't know if you're watching or not, but I appreciate you guys watching nonetheless. Let me know if you think that maybe we're kind of jumping the gun here a little bit. Just remember, again, phosphine is a biosignature. So that's kind of important. This isn't just like, oh, we found a face on Mars. This is like, this would be like finding a house on a distant planet that was obviously built. You know, so uh, yeah, I want to hear what you guys think. Just uh, let me know what you thought about this video, what direction. Like I said, I'm practicing different things. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. I'm pretty sure I already said that. And I will see y'all in the next one.